Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. For those that do not know me, my name is Jill Jenkins. I'm the region manager uh, for Great Plains College. And I can say without hesitation that it's an honor to be a part of today's event. On behalf of the city of Warman, Warman High School, Prairie Spirit School Division, and Great Plains College, I want to extend a warm welcome uh, to our event in honor of National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Great Plains College is situated on traditional lands of Treaty 6 and Treaty 4 territory and traditional homelands of the Métis. We proud, proudly recognize our neighboring Indigenous nations, Nikonit First Nation, Wanero First Nation, Beardies and Okamasis Cree Nation, White Cap Dakota First Nation, Red Pheasant First Nation, Mosquito First Nation, Grizzly Bears Head First Nation, Bee Man First Nation, and the Métis Nation's people and sacred gathering site of Wanaskewin Heritage Park. We respect and honor the treaties that were made in all territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we are truly committed to moving forward with Indigenous nations in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. I consider it an honor and a privilege to have Lyndon Linklater, traditional knowledge keeper and our cultural advisor to join us as our keynote speaker. He will provide us with insight into the tragic legacy of our residential schools and how we can move forward in a good way in truth and reconciliation. For those that are not aware, we have around 150 people from across, all our, across our province, including our campuses in Kindersley and Swift Current in our Zoom webinar, as well as around 60 people in our lecture theater and many others logging on in the Warman High School. We are very excited to be able to offer this event hybrid so that we can accommodate everybody's needs. I wanna mention that after Lyndon's presentation, there will be an opportunity for a Q&A session. Please feel free to write your questions during the presentation as they come up. Our moderator will select the questions and read the questions up to Lyndon at the end of the session. Immediately after our session is complete, for those that are interested, we will be doing a round dance outside of the football field. I now would like to welcome His Worship, Mayor Philip Chuck, to extend greetings. Good morning. I'm just trying to turn on my video. There we go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I actually just finished a Sarita meeting, uh, or was a part of a Sarita meeting, and that's the regional economic uh, development in uh, the Saskatoon region. And our main priority is Indigenous economic development pillar. So with that, I, I come to a uh, acknowledgement today and really working with our partners. Jill, with the college, I thank you very much for allowing us to say a couple um, words here from the city of Mormon, also uh, from Mormon High School. It's been a nice partnership working from when I worked at Mormon High School to following through as mayor for the city of Mormon. So thank you for that opportunity. Um, it's an honor to be representing the city of Mormon and city, uh, city council today. We're very thankful to have partnered with Great Plains College and Mormon High School for this event commemorating the National Day of uh, Truth and Reconciliation. Lyndon Linklater goes back, uh, I've been to many times he sp uh, speaks, and people leave motivated to continue their journey of reconciliation. So we, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have him as our speaker today. On behalf of the City of Warman Council and Administration, I encourage all in attendance to seize every opportunity to gain knowledge and understanding on reconciliation and calls to action. It's important that we continue with our journey towards reconciliation together. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Philip Chuck. Next, I would like to welcome Ms. Gerard, educator at Warman High School. Hey, thanks so much. Um, Dante, Mio Kisipiam. Hello and good morning. It's my great privilege to introduce Lyndon Linklater to you. Uh, Lyndon is a traditional knowledge keeper. He is a cultural advisor and a storyteller. 
And he's a familiar face to many of our students in the high school and also at the college, as he's spoken often about truth and reconciliation and um, why it matters. And I'm always amazed at how he's able to share his own experiences to be vulnerable um, so that, you know, the, the impact is often, um, there's just an authenticity and, and a truth to when he speaks. And uh, like Mayor Philip Check says, you know, I always feel inspired and motivated after listening to Lyndon. Um, so, Kinnan Nasco Mitten, thank you for joining us today, Lyndon. Um, as a thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today, please accept this offering of tobacco. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be here. Um, I welcome all of you and I thank all of you for coming. I can't help it, I'm a storyteller. So I'm gonna tell you a few stories here, but there's a, there's a method to my madness. There's a reason why I wanna tell you these stories here. Uh, first of all, to let you know, I didn't go to residential school. Uh, nor did my brothers and sisters. There's seven of us, or once upon a time, there were seven of us. But uh, our parents went. So my late father, uh, he's been gone now four years. And when he was five years old, that's when he started his uh, residential schooling. Um, he was taken away and put in the residential school in Northwestern Ontario, that's where we come from in, on my dad's side. We come from Treaty 3 territory. And in our language, uh, we call ourselves Anishinaabe people or Anishinaabe people. In English, they call us Ojibwe. I don't know, maybe you heard Ojibwe. There's so many different uh, First Nations in, right across Canada. So on my father's side, we're Ojibwe people. And so my dad went for eight years in Northwestern Ontario, and then they sent him to Saskatchewan. And this is where he finished his uh, final four years of uh, residential school. So he went for 12 years, my dad. And, and as many of you probably know or are learning, the goal of these schools, like why the schools were created, to kill the Indian in the child. Um, the people, what they thought, um, we need to teach these uh, wild people. We need to teach these uh, savage people. Uh, we need to save them. We need to teach them the proper way to dress, the proper way to think, the proper way to pray, the proper way to be. Because their way, no good. So this is the, the mentality why the schools were created. And so uh, when my dad finished his 12 years of residential school, he could only speak English because he wasn't allowed to speak his uh, Ojibwe, Anishinaabemowin, that's how you'd say that in the language. And so he could only speak English now. And uh, my mom, she comes from Saskatchewan here. In English, they call my mom's people the Plains Cree. And uh, my mom went to residential school as well. My mom is 80 years old now. Um, all her life, my mom has uh, been rough and tough and hard to bluff. <laughs> all her life, my mom is a fighter. If something's not right, my mom will say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. You need to stop. And she'll say that to a, a policeman, a judge, a social worker, a teacher. Like that, that's how my mom is. That all her life, she's been like that. So when my mom was 14 years old, uh, my mom said, this is not right. I'm not going to come to this residential school no more. So my mom, uh, she ran away. And she was uh, 14 at the time. Uh, the distance she traveled, it would have been a little under 200 kilometers. Took her two days to get where uh, her grandmother lived. And when she got to her grandmother's house, her grandmother say, what are you doing here? And my mom say, uh, 
I'm not happy over there. I don't like it over there. They, they mean to me. They hit me there. I don't want to go there no more. So her grandmother said, okay, I'll keep you. You're going to live with me. If they come looking for you, I'm, I'll hide you. I won't let them take you. So my mom, she, she never did go back to residential school. Uh, my mom comes from a family of eight siblings. There's eight of them, all girls. My grandpa, he don't know how to make a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my mom was the second oldest of all the girls. But all her sisters, they're not like my mom. Her sisters, they put their head down and they're told what to do and they do it. But my mom's a fighter, eh? My mom would say, no, nope, I'm not going. So, so all her sisters, they continued to go to the residential school. But my mom, uh, she was ended up being raised by her grandmother. So to this day now, my mom is uh, very knowledgeable about our old ways from the old people. The old people have lots of knowledge how things worked in the past. And so my my mom got to keep a lot of our traditions and our values. And uh, here I am today, I'm wearing a, a ribbon shirt. And I, I wear this special shirt today to honor what they call an orange shirt day. Uh, and the story goes, maybe you know the story, uh, a girl, she went to residential school and she had a beautiful orange shirt. And when she went to the school, they take it away from her. And she has to dress like everybody else. All the children, they, they have like uniforms. They all dress the same. And she never did get her shirt back when she finished the residential school. So when she told her story, a person uh, gave her a beautiful orange shirt you know, to, to remember. So now today, it's called the orange shirt uh, day, which is like tomorrow. They've created a, a national holiday of it. But um, that's as fast as I want to share with you my story. Like, we never went to residential school, but I, I hope you can understand um, what happened to my parents uh, affected us as their children. We were impacted by what happened to them. And as I learned later on in life, not only did my mom and dad go, but my grandparents went on both sides, as well as my great grandparents. So like three generations went to the residential school system, you know, so it passed on to us. Um, what happened to all of the people who went to the residential schools is they, they suffer from this uh, illness, it's called a post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The thing about PTSD, anybody can get it. Students can get it. Teachers can get it. Librarians, police officers, soldiers, like anybody can experience uh, an event that's very traumatic. Like my heart goes out to the people of James Smith Cree Nation. Like they're, they've been traumatized and they're hurting from PTSD. And what PTSD does to people, it doesn't matter what color skin you have or what language you speak. If you have PTSD, you're, you're more at risk to develop uh, mental health problems. You're more at risk to develop uh, alcohol and drug addiction problems. Like this is what PTSD does to people. So when I, talk, when I think about all the indigenous people that went to the residential schools, this is what happened to them when they came out. They're all like PTSD. Their spirits are wounded. They're hurt people. And so a lot of uh, people who went to the residential schools, you know, they're at risk and including my late father, my late father, oh, he drank lots. He drank lots too much, caused him many problems. And uh, as his children, that's what we see. That's our home, how we live. So in our home, um, the police would come once a month 
every payday, there's a big party at the Linklater house, you know, and the, the, the old man's beating up the old lady. Like, that's what they say. Because uh, my mom's rough and tough and hard to bluff. Sometimes the old lady beat up the old man. <laughs> but uh, anyways, as a child growing up, this is what we see. You see? So that's how, like, we, we were affected. And as I got older, um, I finished high school, I go to college, and then I want to go to university. So I remember when I went to university, I started to learn about the history of Canada. And I learned about these men who came up with this idea to create the residential school system. One of the men, his name was John A. McDonald. Have you heard of this name? <laughs> Johnny McDonald. He's one of the architects of the residential school system. And there were other names of men. Uh, Laurier, Ryerson, uh, Campbell Scott. These are some other names in our history here in Canada. And, and they're the ones who came up with the idea to make these residential schools. Well, when I started learning this, oh boy, I got angry inside. I got angry up here. And I said to myself, uh, I'm not going to let them get away with it. <laughs> I'm going to learn my language. I'm going to learn my traditions. I'm going to learn my culture. I'm not going to let them get away with it. So it started me on, on my journey. Today now, I'm so grateful that I, I went on my journey Today now they call me a, a knowledge keeper. I'm old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> and I'm young and I'm not that young either. But lots of indigenous people like me, my age, they don't know how to put up a teepee. They don't know how, nobody teach them. They don't know how to uh, hit a drum. They don't know about ceremony. They don't know how to do all these things. You see, um, but me, I, I learned how. So now today, that's what they call me as a, as a knowledge keeper. Um, and so when I started to learn more about the history of, of Canada, I learned this and uh, I wanna, how I wanna do this with you is, uh, I wanna tell you a riddle. And uh, some of you might've heard this riddle come to think of it already, but I, I guess we'll find out soon enough here. And it's too bad I can't see you up there in Zoom land there, but. In my audience here, I want to tell you a riddle. If you know the answer, you raise your hand. Okay? Don't say the answer, okay? But if you know the answer, you just raise your hand. Okay, here we go. Here's the riddle. We have a two First Nation people. They're sitting inside a teepee. You know teepee? Okay, two First Nation people sitting in a teepee. There's a big one and a little one. The little one is the big one's son, S-O-N, son. But the big one is not the little one's father. How can this be? Do you know the answer? I, just, I said, don't say the answer. <laughs> okay, who doesn't know the answer? Well, say the answer. It's his mother. Did you get it? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. This time you say the answer. Okay? <laughs> what color is the sky? That's how fast you should have answered the first riddle. <laughs> now you got to ask yourself how come you didn't answer the, the riddle like right away? When you think about it. So what I'm going to say is in this country, we have been taught to think a certain way. You see in Canada, as part of our DNA, once upon a time, women not allowed to vote. Only men vote. Women, you stay home, you look after the kids, cook, wash, clean, look after the man. That's all you do, stay home. The man wears the pants. And this happened in our country for almost 50 years. 
That's how long it took before women could get the right to vote in Canada. Um, maybe you're aware of this, maybe you're not. In order for a woman to join the RCMP, carry a, a revolver, does anybody know what year? Anybody? 1974. For a woman to carry a rifle and be in the Army, Canadian Army, in Canada, 1989. For a woman to join the Navy and work in a submarine, underwater sub, 2001. Like this is Canada we're talking about here. Right now, we're undergoing what is called truth and reconciliation. So it's very important not to forget the first part of that, truth. The truth of Canada. Canada was built on racist values. Canada was built on paternalism. Canada was built on misogyny. This is our history here in Canada. And it's still prevalent. Today now, a man and a woman will do the same job. Guess who gets paid more money? The man does. This is how it is right now today. So what is happening in, in our country here in Canada, as well as other places in the whole world, there are these movements that have been created. And what has happened is people are coming together and they're saying, we need to change this. This has to stop. This is not right. We don't want to live in a world like this. So some of these other movements, for example, Black Lives Matter, in the United States of America, just because of the color of your skin, you, you stand more of a chance of getting shot to death by a law enforcement than you do just because of the color of your skin. Like that has to change. And this is what people are saying. People are coming together and they're saying no more. There's another movement, it's called the Me Too movement. You've heard of this movement? Uh, women are standing up and they're saying, no, we cannot live like this no more. Men cannot treat us like this. It has to end. And so people are coming together and they're agreeing and they're saying, like, well, we don't want to live like this no more. So the same thing here in Canada. In Canada, we have uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Movement. We have the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women and Young Girls Movement and two-spirited people movements. Um, in Canada, because you're indigenous woman, the murdered and missing indigenous women, young girls, and it's a big long acronym now. <laughs> um, you have more chance of becoming murdered or gone missing. It can be five to eight times higher, even higher. So again, like that has to stop, that has to change. And People are standing up. People are, are speaking out. So like, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. So this is all part of uh, like what is going on in the world. And like the, how I think about it, and I'm sure, and I'm, I'll, well, I'll ask you what you think about it in a second here, but I want to live in a country where it shouldn't matter what color skin you have, where it shouldn't matter how you dress or what pronouns you use or how you pray. Like it shouldn't matter. This is the country I want to live in. Yes? <laughs> yeah, so, and this is what's happening. Eh? Like that's a good thing. So this is part of uh, truth and reconciliation. Now, the thing we also have to keep in mind in our province here, the first residential school was built in 1874, and the last one closed in 1996. So these schools operated in our province for 122 years. At least seven generations of Indigenous people went through that system. 122 years. So if we think Reconciliation is going to be happening next week, next month, next year. 
It's going to take time. It's going to take some generations. But that's okay. That's okay. As long as we all crawl together. We're crawling right now. We're crawling. Um, this, uh, this day, which is tomorrow on September 30th, uh, it has now been proclaimed a, a national holiday, and there's a lot of events going right across Canada. We never used to see that before. You know, when I was a, a student, I, we never heard, there's no such thing. But you see, things are changing. Slowly, things are changing. Um, I'll tell you another quick story, too, about my grandfather, my mom's dad. In our language, we say mushum. Can you say mushum? <laughs> that means grandpa <laughs> in our language, mushum. My mushum, he went to World War II when he was 19 years old. And he went to this very special battle called T-Day uh, at Juneau Beach. And there was many, many casualties on that day. Lots of Canadian soldiers died in that, uh, in that, uh, on that day. And my grandfather lived through it and he survived World War II and he came back to Canada after he served and he lived to be uh, in his mid eighties. He had a, a good long life and my mushroom was a, uh, had PTSD from his experience in the war. And as children growing up, we were all taught about our grandfather and we we're all proud of him. And every November, we wear a poppy. I wear my poppy, I put it over my heart. And I wear my poppy. Now, my mushroom has been gone. I don't know how many years now he passed away. But I, I always wear my poppy. And I'm proud to wear my poppy. You know, when I think about my grandfather, but not just him, I think about all the men and women who gave their lives for me so I can have freedom. So I wear my poppy with great pride and, uh, and I honor the soldiers, all soldiers, even the ones serving today. If someone was to come to me and say, hey, Lyndon, we don't want to wear that poppy no more. The wars are all gone. We, we don't need to wear poppies no more. Boy, oh boy, you know what I would think. <laughs> like I would tell them, you know, like, this is what orange shirt day means to us. This is why we wear the orange shirts to remember the survivors, what they had to go through. And also to all the children who never came home. There's lots, they, they never came home. So this is the, the meaning behind the, the orange shirt. So I, uh, I thank all of you for inviting me to be here. Um, and I encourage you to wear an orange shirt like tomorrow even. Tomorrow is orange shirt day, but I see a lot of people wearing orange shirts today. But yeah, it's wonderful to wear an orange shirt the thing about um, the residential schools is we have to understand, like, we didn't create them. Like, we didn't do that, you know. But this is our country here. This is our Canada. It's up to us to make Canada how it's going to be. We have to do that. No government can do that for us. We have to do that. So how, how can we do that? It starts by learning, becoming educated to, to learn about the past. And certainly not to make the same mistake again. We can, we can never make that same mistake. Canada made a big mistake, big, big mistake. So Canada, Canada has to reconcile. Um, and when I think about reconciliation, you know, what does it mean? For me, 
it's like letting us as indigenous people be a part of, of everything else. You see, because in our history here in Canada, that's not what happened. Like we were targeted. We were prevented. We were not allowed to participate in, in the economy. We were not allowed as illegal. You see, this is part of the, the legacy of, uh, of our history here in Canada. But today now things are different. Now today is freedom. We, we can move, go wherever we want. But once upon a time in our history here in Canada, yeah, we were not allowed to see. And so as part of the education system, yeah, we have to rethink, relearn how to do things. So that's why I love doing that riddle because when a lot of people, they, they never got the riddle, right? Uh, and why not? This is how, what is called institutional racism. It's like right in front of your nose and you can't even see it. If it's right there and you can't even see it. Um, so in learning about the, you know, nowadays, because I, I remember when I went to school and I learned how to read books, I learned about my ancestors. And what does it say in there? It says the savage, it says heathen, it says uh, primitive, it says uncivilized. That, that's what I learned about the, the the First Nation people. Um, but today now I think about it, I say those books, <laughs> those books are incorrect. Yeah. But this is all part of uh, the learning journey. So I encourage you to, to learn, to learn as much as you can. And also to visit, to get to know Indigenous people, to meet them, learn Pretty soon, you're going to find out we're not that different after all. Um, this is how, in my opinion, uh, things will get better. And this reconciliation is ongoing. It's going to take a long time. But we're all in this together. Yeah, all of us, we're all in it together. So I'm going to ask if there's any questions, if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, I'll keep talking. <laughs> We're going to go try to have a round dance outside. So we're doing good for time. It's like, what is it? Uh, in our culture, it's a way to uh, celebrate. We make a big circle and people hold hands and uh, the singer is in the middle and the singer will sing i got a, a sing with my drum and you uh move like this just like that in a circle that's how you you round dance we have round dances uh all throughout the winter and they start about uh seven o'clock in the evening and they go all night three four five in the morning you can you don't have to dance all the time you know <laughs> but you'll dance for a while then you sit down and have a rest and then people will dance and you know and then when you want to dance you just get up there and that's how you do you hold hands and you dance in a circle it's all around dance so i like to invite you to come and try it out and uh, in no time it will be finished and there's only one one dance it won't take long it's not going to be in three, four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like there are some questions. Um, Lyndon, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your kind words and for you teaching us and moving us in a good way, especially involving the heart, the head and the heart in truth and reconciliation. And so thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. Technology. 
Okay. 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 Okay.